Thank you for joining us on Synthesis Workshop. On today's Research Spotlight episode, I'm very happy to have with us Dr. Kaibo Feng. Kaibo got his undergraduate degree from Nanjing University, where he carried out research in the group of Professor Yi Pan. He subsequently completed his doctoral work at the University of Illinois Urbana-Champaign in the group of Professor Christina White, where he worked on late-stage CH hydroxylation, amination, and methylation. Currently, he's a postdoc at MIT in the Buckwald Group. And with that, I'll hand it over to you, Kaibo. Thank you very much for joining us to share your work today. Thank you, Matt, for the kind introduction. And thank you all for tuning in online. Today, I'm very happy to tell you about my thesis research in the White Group on late-stage oxidative CH methylation. One of the fascinating things I find in medicinal chemistry is that a small change in structure can significantly change a molecule's bioactivity, oftentimes. One of the most prominent examples of this is the introduction of metals adjacent to hydroatoms, which can lead to hundreds of folds of potency boost in some cases. This phenomenon is often referred to as the magic metal effect. However, the metal-related analogs of these molecules are oftentimes hard to make and require de novo synthesis from expensive starting materials. Well, if we know what molecule we want to make, this is doable. Six steps to just check a hypothesis is prohibitive in discovery chemistry. And therefore, the high synthetic overhead means that this effect is oftentimes never checked. And so we wonder if we can do this methylation in one step using our chemistry to encourage further studies on this effect. To do this, traditionally, alpha alkylation can be done via methylation, using either a strong base, a directing group, or through single electron transfer. Although these methods have wide electrophile scopes, they are limited in heterocycle scope and functional diversity, and only a few methylation examples on simple substrates have ever been reported before our work. Compared with alkylation, however, installation of an oxygen functionality is much easier. For more than a decade, our group has pioneered in CH oxidation to enable this transformation preparatively, using only one equivalence of the substrate and the selectivity is governed by the electronics, steric, and stereoelectronic factors of the CH bond. In time, we have also developed methods for oxidation on tertiary and secondary artifact CH bonds, as well as tolerance for basic nitrogen and electron poor airings. So we thought with the chemistry we developed, we can take a different approach toward methylation. Namely, we can take the molecule and hydroxylate it, its off CH using our catalyst to furnish hemimnels then activate the hemimnel to form aminium, which is a highly reactive electrophile. We may then trap the aminium with a mild nucleophile to furnish the methylated product. Now, there are many obstacles to develop this strategy. First is site and chemoselectivity, which people have seen in the past with other oxidation methods. We also see in our chemistry overoxidation to imids, which cannot be converted to methyl and is difficult to selectively reduce back to hemimnel. Even after the formation of hemimnel, there are challenges associated with this activation. The hemimnel is prone to elimination, in some cases even as it's being formed. The nucleophile can also cause issues with regards to tolerating electrophilic functional groups. I began this work together with a very talented first-year graduate student, Randy Cavido, to find the best conditions that address all these challenges. We chose trimethyl aluminum as a commercial nucleophile that is both easy to obtain and modest in reactivity to preserve electrophilic functional groups such as ester, ketones, and nitrile. With our previous catalyst, iron PDP and iron CF3 PDP, we see no product formation but only aromatic oxidation, even with hyperconjugatively activated alpha CH bonds present. We were able to overcome this with our new catalyst, manganese CF3 PDP, which has been shown to tolerate electron poor airings in aliphatic CH oxidation. With manganese CF3 PDP, we see little aromatic oxidation. However, we did see a significant amount of overoxidation to imids, which, as I mentioned, cannot be readily transformed to aluminium. Although the reported conditions for magnesium 3 PDP to oxidize alpha CH bonds requires 10% catalyst, we reason that the alpha CH bond is a much more reactive group due to hyperconjugation and may not need as much catalyst to convert. By reducing the catalyst and oxygen loading, we may even prevent some deleterious side reactions that would need higher catalyst loadings, including overoxidation, due to its increased steric bulk. And as we expose hemimnel to the reaction condition, we see that although the regular conditions readily oxidizes the hemimnel into the emit, low loadings make the catalyst an awful alcohol oxidation catalyst, which means that it's a really good catalyst for oxidizing the substrate to hemimnels. And just as we are glad to see that at 0.5 more percent catalyst loading and two equivalents of peroxide, this oxidation is now highly efficient. 
Notably that this also represents one of the highest substrate catalyst ratio in CHX station, which is important for it to be scaled up. Our next challenge was activating the HMML for methylation. One seemingly obvious approach of this is mesylation, to turn the hydroxyl into a good leaving group. But as the mesolate is formed off to nitrogen, and can be easily kicked off, and because the base is used for mesylation, this elimination readily occurred, and we only saw enamine formation with no desired product. In order to deter this issue, we needed to find an activation strategy that does not require the use of a base. We were glad to find that loose acid BF3 works well for lifetimes, with the BF3 binding to the HMML hydroxyl, thus promoting aminium formation. However, this strategy was not useful for more loose base or fragile functionalities, such as oxidolidinones, as BF3 would also bind with these loose basic functional groups and promote side reactions. In order to circumvent this issue, for these substrates, we must also eliminate the use of a strong Lewis acid. Luckily, trimethyl aluminum is intrinsically Lewis acidic, and while it's not strong enough to directly activate the HMML hydroxyl, we found that by in situ converting the hydroxyl to a more labile fluoride, trimethyl aluminum can by itself abstract the fluoride and attack the resulting aluminum to furnish the methylated product. And this approach worked very well for the oxidolinol substrate. And it worked just as well for the lactam. We also discovered that TFAA esterification and TMS triflate activation is a good alternative for activation. As shown here, it is not as effective for simple molecules due to elimination issues, but it's a good choice for complex molecules, where such eliminations are less likely. Finally, we showed that Lewis acidity of trimethyl aluminum is critical for this transformation. Less Lewis acidic nucleophiles, even when they are stronger in nuclear velocity, do not work as well or at all in taking off the fluoride to promote methylation. A simple guide to choosing the best activation strategy for a certain substrate is this. If the substrate does not contain any electrophilic function groups, the BF3 activation strategy would be a good fit. If it does contain these electrophilic groups, then that activation would be optimal. During the oxidation, a small portion of HMML acetate is also formed in situ. While these acetates in most cases convert together with HMMLs during activation, in a few cases, they do not convert. In these cases, the TFAA, TMS triflate activation can be attempted to fully convert the oxidation intermediate. It's also worth mentioning that while the oxidation and methylation can always be accomplished without any purifications in between, the two-step approach provides a unique advantage in allowing facile isolation of the intermediate when desired, which is helpful especially for polar substrates whose methylated analogs have very similar polarity and are otherwise very hard to separate from the unreacted starting material. Having discovered the optimal conditions for methylation, we next saw to see how wide a scope our chemistry can be applied on. As I mentioned, for those with the Lewis basic functionalities, we used DAST activation. Those without, we used BF3. And we're happy to see that it worked very well across the board for lactams, oxadolidinones, and pyrrolidines. Because we were able to significantly lower the catalyst loading, we now may run the methylation on a really large scale without using a significant amount of catalyst. We also were able to use other nucleophiles, such as triethyl aluminum, to install ethyl groups. We also showed that this methylation is very site and chemoselective in substrates containing secondary and tertiary alpha CH bonds, only the secondary CH was oxidized and methylated, and the tertiary CH was untouched despite having a lower bond dissociation energy. The alpha zero centers are also fully retained. We are now also really glad to see that for the first time, we were able to tolerate electron neutral airings due to low catalyst loading, suppressing the undesired offsite aromatic oxidation. Likewise, we are happy to see that this methylation strategy works just as well for piperidines, azepine, and various fused ring systems. One exception to our rule of choosing activation strategies is with piperidine, which is especially challenging due to the six-member ring strongly promoting elimination of the HMML intermediate during the activation stage. For these substrates, as Ron has shown here, it's best to try both activation methods to figure out which one is best for your specific substrate. The strong steric selectivity of manganese CF3PDP is also exemplified by the dibromo isochromane, whose benzoic site has only minimal steric hindrance, yet with reduced catalyst loading, we were able to stop the oxidation at the hemacetal stage, allowing us to readily convert it to the methylated product. Our ultimate goal of this project is to allow direct installation of methyl groups at late stage in complex molecules of medicinal interest. With these strategies, we are very glad to see that the fluorine activation 
With DAS, radioactive fluor worked very well in peptides containing a large sum of Lewis basic and electrophilic functional groups. The BF3 strategy in these cases led to decomposition. We can also tolerate substrates containing basic amines and pyridines by using HBF4 to irreversibly protonate the nitrogen, thus rendering it a strong electron withdrawing group and promoting remote oxidation and methylation, while shutting down oxidation proximal to nitrogen, even for sites off of hydroatoms like oxygen. We're also able to tolerate an unprotected oxidolidinol NH in the case of fenspirit. In many cases of our substrates, we chose nozzle as a protecting group for secondary NHs. This is because nozzle is a valuable pharmacophore and also an orthogonal to the traditional acyl protecting group. When in need, nozzle can be easily removed by thiophenol. We're also happy to see that the manganese 3 pdp catalyst under low catalyst loading is highly cyselective and chemoselective. In substrates containing multiple alpha-CH bonds, only the least hindered secondary site was hydroxylated and subsequently methylated, despite the presence of other secondary sites or highly activated tertiary sites. This high chemoselectivity is also reflected in its unprecedented tolerance toward aromatic rings. Here for the first time we were able to tolerate electron-rich airing motifs, including toluene, pyrazole, aniline, and even anisole in oxidation of various pharmaceuticals to eventually produce the methylated products in synthetically useful yields. Here is another example of a densely functionalized molecule, tetazolid, an oxazolidinone class antibiotic that has impuridine, a tetrazole, and an N-methyl. Our tests on the model substrate that lacks these functionalities give us good yields, which we were able to maintain while readily scaling up this reaction. But we are really glad to see that in tetazolid acetate itself, that has all these Lewis basic functional groups, we were able to get almost the same yield as the model substrate with all the functionalities present, without needing to protect any part of the molecule. This example further exemplifies the high chemoselectivity of the magnesium 3 pdp catalyst at low loadings. Interestingly, the adding of a metal group at the same site in a D5D inhibitor that has a similar oxidolidinone ring has been shown to lead to a ninefold potency boost. Likewise, the introduction of a metal group on the sultan ring of an ROR-C inverse agonist was reported to have led to a 13-fold potency boost. Rondi has shown that we can take an advanced synthetic intermediate of this molecule and directly methylate it followed by a simple CN coupling to access this magic methyl molecule. Alternatively, this methylated analog would require de novo synthesis in six steps and low overall yields. Beyond the aminium and axoniums, we're also interested in looking at imine intermediates. Perhaps one of the most prominent examples for the magic methyl effect is this S1P1 antagonist. The introduction of a methyl group on the benzylic side contributed to an over 2,000-fold potency boost. We were glad that our magnesium 3 pdp was once again capable of oxidizing this molecule at low loadings to furnish the amine while tolerating the dense aromatic functionalities. As amines are not cationic, we do have to use a stronger nucleophile. We found that by activating the amine with TMS triflate and subsequent treatment with methyl greener was capable of converting it to a methylated product, while running the reaction under cryogenic temperatures helped to preserve the very sensitive functional groups. One of the advantages of our catalyst is its ability to do methylene oxidations that are not off-activated. With this in mind, we ask ourselves if we can take these aliphatic secondary alcohols and transform them into metals. While it would be hard to do so on an aliphatic fluoride, an old literature shows trimethyl aluminum can ionize mesolates, likely going through carbocation intermediates. This also works in our system, as we were able to hydroxylate an analog of abiraterone, mesolate it, and use trimethyl aluminum to methylate the intermediate. This is the first example of remote methylation, to the best of our knowledge, as a facile way to obtain these methylated analogs, which again one otherwise would have to go through a strenuous de novo synthesis to obtain. In summary, we have developed the first late-stage methylation strategy that allows highly site and chemoselective functionalization, and for the first time allows these functionalizations to take place in substrates containing electron-rich and electron-neutral airings. This strategy is highly tolerant toward electrophilic functional groups, even in densely functionalized drug molecules. We were also able to carry out this transformation in an extremely high substrate to catalyst ratio, allowing chemists to easily scale up this reaction. And we look forward to its applications in discovery research. Finally, I would like to thank Professor Christina White for being my advisor and for all her tremendous support and guidance, both in this project and throughout grad school in general. I thank Rondi for being such a great co-worker and for contributing equally to this project, as well as the whole White Group, past and present, for all their support and camaraderie throughout my time at Illinois. I thank my co-workers, Advisor, Dr. Jeff Court, Dr. Martins Oderint, and Dr. Wusa Riley, 
for all their helpful input and discussions in the development of this project, as well as Dr. Dean Olsen and Dr. Lian Zhu for all their assistance in animal spectroscopy. I thank our only sources, the NIH and Pfizer. I also would like to thank my alma mater, the University of Illinois. For those of you who are considering grad school, Illinois is a wonderful choice. We're always excited to see people try our chemistry, and as our catalyst is currently being commercialized, if you want to try our catalyst, and especially this methylation strategy, feel free to email our group, and we may be able to send you some catalysts for you to try. If you have any questions, feel free to connect me on LinkedIn and ask me any questions you may have. Thank you again for tuning in and for your attention, and have a nice day. Thank you for joining us for this Research Spotlight episode, and thank you to Kaibo for putting together such a nice talk. If you enjoyed the episode, please support us by subscribing and telling your peers about this podcast, and feel free to send us any questions and comments you have. Follow us on Twitter to stay up to date, and see you all next time!